Hello everyone, my name is Sanchai Thalnerkar, and today we are going to create a project that not only navigates the web on its own, but also analyzes the images and takes screenshots of all the URLs that it goes through to gain deeper understanding and context of what it has visited, and then later creates a knowledge base that can be used for question answering or comparison-based systems. So let's get started. Before proceeding, we'll need to have few API keys ready that are crucial, and also, at the same time, we'll need to understand the project structure required for this project as well. So, let's jump over to VS Code. Make sure that you have your project directory over here. Your project directory should have the following three files. A.n file to store all the API keys and environment variables. An app.py file which will act as the front end and all our streamlit code will reside over here. A knowledge.py file, which includes the entire script to extract, load, transform, and analyze the images that have been passed through while browsing the internet. So let's start by first filling in the environment variables and securing our API keys. Head over to Clarify, make sure that you are logged in, go into your security settings, make sure that you scroll down and see this personal access token over here, make sure you copy that token, head over to VS Code again, open that .n file, and make sure that you paste it right beside clarify underscore pat. The same way we'll need to find two other keys and open underscore AI key and SERP underscore API key as well. Head over to OpenAI dashboard in OpenAI. Create a new key if you don't have a key already. Make sure that you paste it again in the same path that we have pasted clarify underscore pat. Now go to serper.dev Make sure that you go to API key and copy the API key from here as well. Paste it in .m file that we have over here and make sure that these three API keys are properly there in your project. Now, since all these API keys have been set up properly, we'll need to do two things first. Create a virtual environment and make sure we install the required libraries as well. So, open the terminal type Python when n. This command will create a virtual environment folder like this. Make sure you run it. As I already have a folder over here, I won't run it twice, but make sure that you do. Once that folder pops up, you need to activate the environment as well. So to activate the environment, you need to type source env slash bin slash activate. Now make sure that you are in the same directory as the n file is. So if I run this in the entire agent browsing, it won't work because it is not in that directory. So make sure that when you run it, you are in the same directory that hosts the .env folder as well. So in this folder, when I run at the activate script, the virtual environment will get activated. Now you'll need to install these libraries, that is selenium, request, python.nv, and clarify. Each of them have a significant purpose in the entire script, that as we go through each of the functions, we'll analyze and understand what they are used for. Make sure you run them as I already have all the requirements satisfied. We can proceed. Now we'll start with knowledge.by first, as it is the backbone and the backend for an entire project. Before understanding the entire code, Let's go through what do we actually need for the entire script to work properly. We need to import all the necessary libraries from Selenium to request to concurrent processing, parallel processing as well. So we have imported all the libraries that we need. Next, we need two environment variables to get loaded properly, and we have three environment variables stored. So we are using the python.env framework to actually take in the keys from this.env variable and use it in our script when needed. Now, structure and step-by-step -step approach for this is that we need a terminal query to actually pass in what we are trying to search for. For example, if I want top trends in 2024, so this is my search query that I want to search for. So there is a way that it is passed into the code. So we'll use terminal to do that. So we'll need a way to store the query. Next, we are going to need SERP API to take in that query and actually return the URLs of the search results for us. So SERP API actually is a much faster API provider than Google for Google search results, and it's cheaper than Google. 
So using SERP API will help us return the top URLs for that particular query that we are trying to find for. Next, what we need to do is we need to take Selenium and pass in the URLs that we received from this function. These URLs will then use by Selenium to navigate to those particular URLs and make sure that screenshots of those URLs are taken properly. Now the screenshots are crucial because it will contain the entire information and extraction of knowledge that we are going to need. So taking those screenshots and making sure that there is a directory or a folder where we store all those screenshots so that we can later fetch those screenshots and send it to Clarify's GPT Vision API as well. So next we need to feed the screenshots taken to the model to get the prediction. Now once the Selenium script has successfully run and all the screenshots are stored in a proper directory, we'll need a way to actually extract those images from that specific path and then pass it to the GPT Vision API from Clarify and make sure that the analysis of those images is received. And we'll do this concurrently because if we have five, 10 screenshots, we don't want each screenshot analysis to be returned one after another. We can do that at the same time so it will help us save time. So getting model prediction is an important function that is the third and fourth step after taking screenshots. This is the ursync your library that we are going to use to run the model prediction concurrently. So we are going to create a loop and make sure that these 10 or any processes that are run parallelly happen in this loop. And once this loop is finished, it gets out of this loop and the processes, this is the ursync, your library that is used to run the model prediction concurrently. We are going to use this. We are going to wrap them get model prediction function inside this async library to make sure that these images are sent to Clarify's API parallelly and we get a response back from the server at most at the same time. Next, we will have to define a mean function where we kind of put together all this above functions and kind of connect them together and make sure that these functions are called when they are needed to actually get the desired output. So let's start with the get arguments function. So we are going to use our pass. It will help us type in the query after we are about to run the Python file. It will store that query in a variable, and we are going to use that variable later in our main function as well. Next, we are going to have to define a search query, which will take in the query that has been passed in the first function, and it will send it to the server's API as well. And it will return us the top five URLs or any number of amount of URLs that you wish to receive for that. So you can actually check what is the URL that is going to be set. We need to set the URL setting up the payload and using that payload to pass the query that we typed earlier. Make sure that the headers are set properly and use the request library to kind of send this post request to server's API. And the response is then stored in the response variable. Next, we are going to use response underscore data variable to actually extract meaningful information from the JSON that we are going to receive and make sure that we only have the content that we are interested in, not the complete response. Next, once we have those URLs, the next step is to take those URLs, put it to the Selenium script and make sure that the browser browses through those URLs and after visiting each URL and making sure that the page loads any entirety, it takes screenshots and stores them in a screenshot underscore dr directory. And it will check first if the screenshot underscore dr directory exists. If the screenshot directory does not exist, it will create one and then store the screenshots inside of it. And if it exists, it is not going to make a new one for us. So next we are going to take those screenshots that are stored in the directory and feed it to the model to get prediction and analysis of that image. So to do that, we are going to have to set a custom prompt over here. Make sure that these three variables, that is the image path prompt and open API key are used. We are going to use the same code provided by Clarify's documentation to actually take in the image and pass the image to the API. Once we do that, we have to make sure that we are inputting the right model URL. So in this case, it is GPT-4 vision because we are going to use the vision model for analysis. 
Next, we are going to wrap this prediction function in a sync so that there is a concurrent loop that is being created and all of the screenshots that are sent are sent parallelly and we receive a response at the same time. Lastly, we are going to use the main function to kind of combine all these functions together and make sure that they are in order and are called whenever necessary. So we are storing the query using the args, get argument function, making sure that again, this is storing a query variable. Then we are declaring the sub underscore API key, which we declared at the top from environment variables. Then we are going to use the URL variable and that variable will hold the response or the return request made from the search function. So the search function will take the query from here, the sub underscore API key, and it will return us with the top URL that we want from our purposes. Next, we need to check if the URLs are present, then it should proceed to take screenshots and checking if the directory is present or not and the entire take screenshots loop as well. After we have done that, we will start and create a new loop and make sure that the entire loop processes until all the images in our screenshot directory are completed. Now, what we are going to do after that is after each of those images get a prediction, we need a way to store the model's responses in a particular text file. So that text file will act as a knowledge base that will then later use to compare or ask questions about it. At the end, we are going to use sub underscore process to actually run another Python file that we have over here, that is the app.py file. What this is going to do is that after the entire flow is completed, at the end, it is going to launch our printout. This is important because we won't have to again manually run the app.py as well. So let's move on to app.py where we will actually write the logic of how our printout looks like, what and how queries should be passed and how the images are going to be displayed over there. So in the same AP, this is the ersync, your library that is used to run the model prediction concurrently. So in the same approach, we will import the necessary libraries that we are going to need. We will load the environment variables, and again, we will go step by step to the functions that we think are needed. First, we need a function to actually construct the final prompt. What does that mean? Is that because we already have a knowledge base that has been generated through the Selenium script and for question answering, what we need to do is that we need to create a final prompt that will take in the user's query as well as it should take in the module responses underscore text file that is the knowledge base to actually send a final request to the vision API so that it understands not only the new image that you are using for question answering or comparison, but also it has the past knowledge of what site, so URL that it did visit. Next, we need to show the loading or the processing while it is being doing. So a loading bar is a good way to think that the backend is actually working. And you will get an idea when that entire process will be completed. A show success message will be a function that will once response is received, it will kind of tell that and show a check mark that yeah, we have received a response from the API. Next to expand the details and show progress bar. These are all UI elements that we need to actually make our product or project look successful and professional. Next again, we have the same function that we are defined in knowledge.bi, but this time we are going to parse the image that is being passed from the front end, that is from the streamlit user interface, whatever image that we are going to take, this is the image that is going to be passed into this function and it will be sent later to Clarify Vision API as well. Next, we need a function to actually load those screenshots and then pass it to the model prediction. So this model prediction will take images from Streamlit's front end. We will need to use the load screenshot functions to actually display what are the screenshots that have been taken and stored in the directory. So once the front end launches, you will kind of have an entire look about what UI is it visited and what kind of knowledge it has up to that point. Lastly, the main function to again combine everything together, make sure that the functions are called whenever they are needed and it executes at the same time in a specific order as well. So let's start from construct prompt. We are going to read the responses from model.txt file that will be created once we run the knowledge.pi file. And it is going to take this final prompt string where the user input is going to be the input that we are going to type through Streamlet's front end. 
The required knowledge will contain file underscore contents, that is the text inside that text file, and at the end it needs to make sure that it properly distinguishes between the knowledge and the user question that has been asked. Next we are going to use the processing UI to actually show that the processing is happening in the back end actually, rather than waiting for the user to figure it out. It is a simple message that will be displayed in the front end once we have successfully processed the image as well. Next function, the show expander with details. Function, it is kind of a table that we are going to create for analysis or comparison at the end of the video or at the end of the streamlets response and streamlets front end. Next we have a show progress bar that as soon as the prediction or as soon as the progress is loading at the back end, it will kind of give us an idea of where what is the stage the request is at. The model prediction function this time is completely similar to the function that we have in our knowledge base, but how we read the image is what differs actually in this. So over there, we actually used actual file path to take images from the file path that is stored locally. But now we have to kind of save those images, actually use the bytes format to actually save those images and then encode them to pass it to the Clarify API that is making sure that image is actually formatted and properly met how the Clarify API wants it. Next is the load screenshots function. So the load screenshots function is going to actually take in all these screenshots from that directory and it will kind of load and pass it to the streamlets front end. So all images can be seen in proper grid like structure. Again, the main function over here, which will act as interactive knowledge base and screenshots display title that will be the title of our streamlit project. So you can add your title over here. A text data will symbolize that this is where your user input or the final prompt that we want for comparison actually goes through and all the other UI elements that we have actually written. We are going to combine them, add buttons, spinners, loaders, etc., to actually make sure that the front end is properly structured, looks professional, and it is actually ready to use. So once this main function is declared, we have our front end and knowledge.pi ready now we need to actually run the knowledge.py script to see it how it actually kind of works. So let's actually understand how this entire project takes place and how this script works. So first write python knowledge.pi and your query goes inside of this. So write your query over here, press enter. It will initiate the script and it will start to browse to that script. It will open our Google Chrome browser in a few seconds and it will go to that link automatically. It will take a screenshot of this URL that is present over here. And after doing that, it will move to the next URL. And as LinkedIn requires login, it will understand that, but it will proceed to the next link automatically. As it is going to Glassdoor right now, it took the screenshot of this URL. Now the fourth URL in the search query is this. So again, to this particular website, screenshot was taken. And also at the same time, you can see the status over here that it is in this URL. It has automatically taken the screenshots and we have the screenshots folder over here with the five screenshots of this five URLs. Now the next step of the Python is being executed where it is getting the model prediction for all these screenshots at the same time. And once it does that, we will have a model responses.txt file over here, which will have all the insights of those apps and all the screenshots and the analysis that have been run through the screenshots of those images. Then automatically, the streamlit user interface will open and that interface will then load up all the screenshots and also it will have a text input. That text input box is where our query will go along with an upload button, which will upload which will give the option to upload any of this image for comparison and making sure that we have a final kind of all the information ready so that when we hit enter, we will not only have the knowledge base for the model to understand, but also an image reference that will be fed to the API along with it. So let's wait until we have the prediction for all these screenshots over here. It should be done in a few seconds at most now. So we have this model.responses.txt file that was created. And once we click on enter, let's see what error do we have over here. Cannot import. Okay, it's not images, it's image that we have already imported over here. 
So let's save this file. Make sure that you can see over here all the screenshots that it took. It is automatically loading that thing over here. So the basic example what we can do right now is that comparing this image analysis. So make sure that you upload any of these random resume over here. And once it is done, you can type in any basic prompt like am I? So double for this chart. Give me a detailed analysis and tell me to test. Need to prepare for it. And if not, then tell me and submit. It will then process the image. It will automatically encode into base64 format and it will then feed to the Clarify GPT Vision API to actually get the response from the model. So it's processing the image. It has been converted and right now it will take the knowledge base that it had generated from all these images. And here we have the prediction from the model. It automatically gave us a response that to determine if you are suitable for machine learning job in Mumbai, it will compare the knowledge skills from resume with the requirements that were typically found in the screenshots of the images. So based on my resume, that was a sample resume that we have uploaded over here, it automatically told and extracted all the information and based on machine learning jobs. And as we can see over here, that the resume of the person is of an administrative assistant and he has no experience in machine learning whatsoever. Still, it was able to actually differentiate between them and was able to answer our question that is based on this analysis, it appears that background is more aligned with administrative and management rules rather than technical machine learning positions. And it also gives an answer that if we want to prepare for this job, this is what we will have to do. And it did all of this information analysis and searching for the right URL and gathering information for that automatically. So this is the entire project.